the New York Giants select Daniel Jones. Oh, no! I saw a professional quarterback. I was in full-blown love. Jones looks to the left corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Jones! People outside of our team surprised. Well, we picked them. I hope Eli has a great year and Daniel never sees the field. Fires a field and it's picked off! And he just heaved it up there. Daniel Jones is the new starting quarterback for the New York Giants. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Take. I'm Roz Golden Wood, filling in for Molly Kiram, and I'm here with Max Kel Kellerman, and Stephen A. Smith is joining us from Philly. What's up, guys? Good morning. Good morning, Roz. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Good What's morning, up, good Stephen morning. A. How you doing? Good morning. We're well on this yo, fine yo. hump day, midweek. All right, well, we've got some big news in New York. Uh, heading into week three, rookie Daniel Jones has been named the giant starting quarterback, and Eli Manning steps down from the throne. His reign as starter has so far spanned 16 seasons, highlighted by two Super Bowl at Super Bowls and two Super Bowl MVPs. Now, keep in mind, guys, he has a no-trade clause. So, with the Giants giving the keys of their future to a 22-year-old, to Daniel Jones, should Eli ask to be traded? No, he shouldn't ask to be traded. Look, if the Giants can get something real for him, you know, better than a fifth-round pick, a real good like from the Jags, for example, as Stephen A. brought up yesterday, then they have to consider doing that, right, to get something real. But, but when you could have saved $17 million if you just cut ties with him, but you didn't, and the plan was for him, whenever Daniel Jones was to take over, mentor J Daniel Jones, well, now that's part of why he's getting paid. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, obviously there's the argument you spent your whole career as a New York football giant. Um, now how many players, you know, with his resume wind up playing on other teams? Joe Montana did it with the Kansas City Chiefs. He still had enough juice to get him to an AFC championship game. But it would be weird to see a guy like that in another uniform. The fact that he is getting that money to mentor Daniel Jones, that's part of it, where he, as soon as the job was taken for him, go to the team and say, I want out. Eli, that's part of the reason that you're still here. It wasn't just to play football. You haven't been good at that for a while. It's to do this now, and it would be a very bad look for him. It would look selfish. Um, it would look, uh, it would sully kind of the pristine image he now has in Giants lore as this incredibly clutch Super Bowl champion who even though Stephen A, he spent years as average or high average or at times low average, <coughs> was a giant for life kind of guy and one of their all-time greatest mm. players, I don't think he should ask for a trade. Well, not only do I think you're wrong, I think that you're a bit hypocritical because you're sitting here talking about how things would look. You're talking about stuff like using words like weird and how did, you know it would come across. I don't ever recall Max Kellerman caring about anything like that as it pertains to players. Uh, a matter of fact, in the three years plus that you and I have been together, you came on here on July 25th, uh, 2016, if I remember correctly. My memory is pretty damn good with that. Um, I, I, I recall us doing an excess of 800 shows and not one time, or actually 700 shows, then not one time. Did I ever hear you talking about the optics as it pertains to a player and what they desire? And suddenly here we are when it comes to your New York Giant, your quarterback in Eli Manning, your franchise that's been perpetually moribund. Suddenly we're getting into aesthetics and emotions and feelings. Am I talking to Max Kellerman or am I talking to dear Abby or Dr. Phil? You answer that question a little bit later. Here's the reality of the situation when it comes to Eli Manning. 116 and 116 in his career. That's a 500 record. Yes, he's a two-time Super Bowl champion with two Super Bowl MVPs. Oh, by the way, beat Tom Brady and Bill Belichick both times, which obviously is a strong case why he will end up in the Hall of Fame. I don't think anybody can deny that he'll end up there when you consider some of the other people that made it in there, even though a legitimate argument can be made that because of that subpar 500 record, he doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame in some people's eyes, not necessarily mine. But here's the key stat for me, Max. 8 and 25 in his last 33 starts as the quarterback for the New York Giants. Not to mention the fact that he's been involved in the enormous level of heat that has come in the direction of the franchise. When Ben McAdoo and Jerry Reese wanted to sit him down, they took a lot of heat from it. Some people say they lost their job because of it. Folks rallied to Eli's defense and how he was being scapegoated. Well, we fast forward 
to this season, it was our last season. And then you had Odell Beckham Jr. as electrifying as he was, as electrifying as Saquon Barkley is. Then we talked about Odell Beckham Jr. His personality didn't necessarily fit, fit, you know, you know, vibe with the culture that the New York Giants are accustomed to having, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we get to this season, and there's a guy by the name of Daniel Jones who get him in. Obviously, has a lot of faith in Sherman. Clearly, has a lot of faith in. And as a result, what you have is a situation is we're basically saying Eli Manning is done. If you're Eli Manning, do you want to go out a two-time Super Bowl champion, a potential future Hall of Famer? Do you really want to go out, Max, with an eight and twenty-five record in your last thirty-three starts, with everybody assuming that you are finished, or do you want to find yourself in a better situation where you can have a more respectable ending? To your Iron Man career, the I think it's the ending. latter, and I think that's why he would be. I think that's why he would be justified in asking for a trade because I don't think he would do it in an acerbic or truculent fashion. He would just sit up there saying, "Look, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. I did what I could, but let me move on rather than hold this clipboard." Four to, to five career. years ago, they were losing because. They had a bad offensive line, among other things. It wasn't Eli's fault. The last several years, Eli is as big a culprit or bigger in terms of their losing as anyone. The reason his record isn't very good primarily is because he hasn't been very good recently. And so, to, like, I don't know why you would think that his, his 500 record would improve on another team because it might not. Eli's never been the kind of guy to take a mediocre group and make them great. He's the kind of guy where if you put good things around him, He'll come through under pressure. He'll keep the ship steady and come through under pressure. You know, you talk about the end of a guy's career. I think about Kobe Bryant, Derek Jeter. Um, when they weren't good anymore, Derek Jeter's presence on the Yankees in his last season probably cost him a trip to the playoffs. Um, Kobe Bryant was bad at the end of his Lakers career, and he was taking every shot and being completely inefficient. And those teams extended those guys' contracts beyond the point that they should have because they felt in a way that they owed it to them and also the fan base wanted it. False. But also the players had some leverage because the team would have been vilified if they let Kobe Bryant or Derek Jeter wear well, another jersey. Now, I want to say, hold on. If it were me, I would have told Kobe and Jeter. I'm a big Yankees fan. I'm a Lakers fan, too. I'd have said, okay, bye. You really want to put on the jersey of another team when you're old and not good anymore? That's the way you want to go out? The team has leverage, too. But the reason I bring that up is Kobe and Jeter got extra contracts. So did Eli Manning. He got that last contract, that he got that extra money when they could have cut him that he didn't really deserve anymore. Max. So now that they're going to bench him, Stephen A., his job is to mentor the new guy. That's part of why you're paying him. I, un I understand it's a debate show, but you have to give me an opportunity to answer some of the dribble that you're spewing. Okay, you have time. when you bring up Derek Jeter, that's when it's when it, you bring up Derek Jeter, that's valid. I'm sick and tired of you mentioning Kobe, and that's why I'm glad we got our girl Roz there sitting in that chair right now. <laughs> Roz, correct me if I'm wrong here, because I've tried to tell Max this, who was doing afternoon drive and on LA radio, doing a great <laughs> job with him on Marcellus. By the way, I give props where it's due. It was a great radio show with you guys. They probably Thank miss you. you in LA. Here's the reality of the situation, Max Kellerman. Understand this: Kobe Bryant, the Lakers were so moribund. I'm talking about the Jim Bus era that you couldn't get anybody to come to L.A. And so as a result, being the family business that the Lakers are led by Jeannie Buss and what have you, I'm not trying to act like they didn't, you know, they didn't feel like they were indebted to Kobe to some degree. But what I'm saying, what was really going on is that you knew you weren't going to have a team because you knew you couldn't get anybody to come to the Lakers. So as a result, you paid Kobe because you knew he was going to be the box office drawer, that regardless of, of it, how Stephen he a. looked coming off of those injuries. That was what happened. Well, no, no, Stop Stephen mentioning a. Kobe Bryant when you bring up something like this. That, it doesn't that, compare. It doesn't equate. Wait, that was part of it, but that wasn't the whole dynamic at play. The way that played out is the Lakers also felt pressure, and Jeannie Buss and them were even putting out in the media, like, we want to signal to the league. This is how we take care of our guy. The Yankees were going to take care of Jer Derek Jeter at the end. The Lakers were going to take care of Kobe Bryant at the end. The Giants have taken care of Eli Manning Two at the end. Situations. It's time for Eli to take care of them. So, Max, I think you're bringing up an Educate interesting him, point before, before we go to break. Um, you know, you point out Jeter, you point out Kobe, you say they were taken care of, but they weren't necessarily beneficial to their franchises towards the end of their career do you think Eli Manning will be beneficial even not as in a reserve role for the Giants 100 percent 
He's Why would he be different than the two, the two examples you gave? Well, you need a quarterback, and he'd be a perfectly fine backup quarterback, and he's also an Iron Man. He'll be available. But most importantly, because if the plan is for Daniel Jones to take the reins from Eli, 